Team Hearth League and Hearthstone fans, welcome to the premier night of Thursday Night Throwdown uh, for Team Hearth League. My name is Cinder, and I am joined in the booth for this cast by my primary partner in crime. It's Combat Wombat. Combat, what's up, man? Hype. Let's do this. It's exciting to be back here. Exciting to have the top of the Sylvanas League and Ragnaros League season 2018. Yeah, this is going to be good stuff. Uh, I know a lot of you have just came back from Tavern Talk. A uh, really great stream there from uh, from, from Force of Will, Steffi, uh, and Jack Sox. Uh, really excited to have them back. So shout out to them for, for a great uh, intro to this show. Uh, but for tonight, uh, Thursday Night Throwdown, this is kind of the inaugural uh, day for uh, Team Hearth League. We, we are starting off with Season 8 for Ragnaros and Season 5 for Sylvanas. But uh, Wombat... Uh, for those who are new to the league, can you explain what these two leagues are and, and how they function? Well, for Team Hearth League, we actually have two leagues. We have Ragnaros, which is played in Conquest format. Uh, each team has five players who then match up uh, based on their on individual power ranking versus the reciprocal power ranked players on the other team. Play five matches. Winner getting three and the loser getting a variable amount of points depending on how many games they win. The team with the most points at the end of at the end of the week wins. Sylvanas League is a similar format, however, played in Last Hero Standing, which means that the deck that you that you win with you keep, as opposed to in Conquest, where you, the deck that you win with is eliminated. Right. So we have two very different formats, and for tonight. Uh, the match we have is a Ragnaros match, is that correct? Yep, we have Slimsh and Earl, two heavy hitters in Rag League, facing off tonight. Yeah, these are these are the, the one seeds for their respective teams. Both are established players in Team Hearth League. They come with a pretty big pedigree uh, in this community, so this is going to be a, a high-powered, heavy-hitting match to see. Uh, talk to us, Combat, a little bit about their classes and bands. All right, let's get. Um, oops, sorry, I'm I'm out of that screen right now. Let me get that uh, up. I'll 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 sorry, cover sorry. you for a hot second. Uh, Slimch, uh, his lineup is Druid, Paladin, Priest, and Rogue. Earl uh, for Swagoy is taking Paladin, Priest. Oh, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Slimch is Druid, Paladin, Priest, and Warlock. Earl is Paladin, Priest, Rogue, and Warlock. So the difference there, Slimch bringing the Druid, Earl bringing the Rogue. And uh, Wombat, are the, are the uh, bands in just yet? Yep, and it looks like they are just starting now. So let's hop into the game. Absolutely. Uh, it, this is Conquest, so normally uh, Q order is, is uh, randomized, but some people have a preferred lead-in. Do you, uh, Wombat, do you see any lead-ins, obvious lead-ins for, for either player here? I think you got to open Warlock here. I mean, I think that based based on the remaining matchups, Warlock is just too good not to put in the, put out in game one. And let's see. Oh, Slimsh's Priest is up, so he's gonna. We're gonna be seeing Priest versus Paladin here. Yeah, this is and interesting. They 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 both ban Warlock. I I, I am I am surprised by this. Wow. Look at that. So the priest the priest opener here. Uh, Earl with the Paladin, it's it's his turn one. We're waiting for the first play to come in. Uh, but uh, it looks like Slimsh got got to open up with the uh, Cleric, Northshire Cleric, which is absolutely preferred. Uh, Earl with the Elemental looks oh, like this is going to be an aggressive deck. Priest has an, uh, Slimsh has an amazing opening hand here. He just has every tool at his disposal to shut down this Paladin's early aggression. Look at that. I mean, it's an embarrassment of riches. Potion of Madness, Radiant Elemental... Uh, Spirit Lash, Wild Pyromancer. Yeah, this doesn't feel great for Earl having to go uh, coin into the, 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 the blade there, the rallying blade, just to yeah. clear out that cleric. No board development. So what do you do here against this board? I mean, I, I think it's acceptable just to heal and hold, try to wait him out here. Or do you put out the hoarder? Oh, put out the hoarder. Ho he's holding two Blessing of Kings in his hand for Earl, and he's got to be able to stick something to the board in order to develop that. And the, he doesn't have a lot of options for it, uh, but he does have a refill in the, in the call to arms that just came into hand. Yeah. Now he doesn't know it, but Slimch has perfect answers to this with yeah. Pyro Spirit Lash to follow that up on four. The light protects me. 
Yeah, that's a lot of uh, small board damage available for Slimpsh, and all Priest needs to get going is to hold yeah. the, the board until about turn five or six, and look at this Acolyte of play Pain coming into hand. That's going to combo really nicely with the rest of Slimpsh's hand. Yeah. I'm just looking at what... Basically, the, the Paladin... Let the pain speak to me. Uh, let's see here. So Paladin... Earl is coming into turn four. He does have to address his Acolyte of Pain. The pain Blade will take care of it, but he has some options. He can call the arms, or he can develop Tall uh, with the Blessing of Kings. Looks like that's what he's going to do. Yeah, the Blessing's his best move here, because it, the Priest does not have... Um, Priest only really only has one answer against it this early in the game, and we see that Slimsh just doesn't have that right here. Oh. But he will in two turns. So basically the priest's strategy here is to basically mitigate damage for two turns until he can get that Psychic Scream online. And that Priest of the Feast coming into the hand for Slimpsh just on time is definitely going to help with that. 3-6 body is is a big trading uh, um, piece of material, yeah, it's and it has the additional healing effect. Potion of Madness, yeah. Yeah, this will pop the shield uh, very efficiently and remove a small token off the board. Uh, Earl now yeah. can continue to develop tall, or he can uh, go with call to arms. Look at this, a seed giant. Interesting tech for Earl. Huh. What What do you think he's playing playing that for? Is it is you think it's anti priest tech? Well, you know the giant builds tend to do fairly well against priest if they can develop them quickly. Uh, however, if you have like really aggressive lineups, like if you got a paladin mirror, those sea giants mm -hmm. can be game winners by themselves. Yeah. All right. Well, he's going real tall here. Yeah, that nine nine is going to be a real problem if Slimsh can't get into a into a removal piece here. Oh, he's going to take it off the board, which oh, uh, Slim Slimsh has got a lot of pieces here. Um, yeah. So question is does he even really see this board as a threat right now because he could survive it for at least three turns by itself well that's that's three turns that earl can develop uh behind that nine six nine, if he doesn't nine. do anything else so slimch has to consider uh how he's going to deal with that nine six in the meantime i think anduin can help psychic scream can put it back into the deck as a one one all of those good plays yeah yeah i think he's just, he's just playing conservative he's going to bait him here and here we go. And Earl, Earl senses it's time, his time to have to make a move. And that's not going to be a lot of help. He's going to get... He'll be able to take out the Radiant Elemental, but he's going to... Those are all going to get sent back to his deck here. Yeah, that Psychic Scream is, uh, is perfectly aligned here. That's going to leave Slimsh at 19 health. Uh, Earl does have some development, though. He can respond with that Corridor Creeper, but not much else. Divine Favor is... will give him a refill, though. Let's see here. So this is all going to go, and, and unfortunately, none of those buffs help either his Creeper or his Giant. Correct, yeah. The the, the, the lack of destruction from, the, from Psychic Scream means that that Creeper has to be played fairly as a five mana, so he can either hero power or he can develop a couple of elementals behind it. I think you just play the elementals here for the additional bodies. Yeah, boy, he's gonna... I'm not sure he's gonna be able to reload before the priest can really shut this game down now. So we're gonna go... We're gonna see some of, the, some of these little tokens come out, try to... He's gonna try to get set up to cheat the giant out next turn. Also emptying his hand for the divine favor here due yeah. to draw looks like... Uh, quite a number of cards. The uh, the unidentified mall comes in as the divine shield mall. That's a great pickup for that mall. Yeah. So now I think we're probably going to see um, Thalnos Spirit Lash trying to take this board, trying to take this board out, or a combination of Pyro Thalnos Spirit Lash. Yeah, that uh, Thalno Spirit Lash will mostly clear the board. It'll give Slimsh a, a huge chunk of healing, eight points, almost back to full. And he picks up on the draw Glimmer Root uh, to give him a little bit more card advantage here. And, oh. Call to arms, that's go, interesting. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably go with the Hydrologist here. Well, remember, this is this is uh, Glimmer Root, so he has to guess. So he has to take the call to arms. Oh, that's right. Sorry, sorry about that. Got tunnel vision and, there. Uh, <laughs> the Psychic Scream already doing its damage. Uh, Earl's top deck here on turn eight, a Silver Hand Recruit. Mm. 
Let's see. Can't no. He can't work the giant out this turn. Boy, no, he's he's one mana behind. Yeah. Yeah. This is really painful for for Earl. He's he's starting to run out of gas. Play this out. One call to arms. Yeah, like that that divine shield is gonna have to save his bacon and uh, preserve this board for a turn. Now Slimsh doesn't know about giant tech, so he may well end one against this here. Yeah, he, he may, may just, yet. he may use the Anduin to clear the 5-5 five five and not know about the Sea Giant. Well, let's see, he's got, you know, if I were him, actually, I would probably go Pyro and then follow up with, follow up with spells. Yeah, two spells will clear uh, clear three or four bodies, leave the 5-5 five five for Anduin or Shadow Word Depth to clear. Yeah, he, well, he's got a full clear, oh, nope. Oh, oh he's going to go for the Anduin, looks like. Yeah, he do he doesn't know about the giant, so I think this is this is probably his best play here. Yeah, with it, without this the knowledge, the the caster vision that we have, he he yep. thinks this is the best way to, to reset the clock. Yeah, the the next big threat, he, the next big health threat, he thinks is going to be the second quarter creeper and then Leroy. So yeah, I think it's from his perspective, this it's a sound play. Second divine favor going to get deployed here for Earl. That's the uh, leaves him with us just a single card call to arms left. After that, he's living off the top of his deck. Yeah, he's only got ten cards left here. So, the question is, does he have enough gas in that to win? But we fight. Well, we've seen a nice big buff here, but we've seen just a chunk of minions. Small minions already come out and been cleared by Slimsh pretty effectively. That rallying blade, a nice to, uh, pairing with the uh, divine shield from the unidentified mall. Yeah. All right. I think you, as much as I like Kazakas here, I think, well, we may go, we may see Kazakas for one mana and then uh, a pyro chain. Yeah. That uh, two damage to everything will really help to uh, clear out this board. The pyro can pop the, the, the bubbles and then the two mana AOE can can do the rest of the damage. Yeah. Shadowy thoughts. Let's see how he let's see how he lines this up. And I mean, you know, I one of the go for go it. Ahead. I'm saying I think it's acceptable to play Kazakas out first, but oh, we're gonna see Call the Arms come down with it. And probably follow, <laughs> followed by Shadow Word Pain and a ping. Boom. What's he hoping to get with the Call to Arms? Is it just using it to cast a spell? Yeah, I think he was just using it as a combo starter here to break the divine shield. Be able to do this to get the full clear with the uh, pain. And good deck knowledge by Slimch. He knew that the call to arms couldn't pull anything from the deck, so he just used it to initiate the the combo. So uh, good recognition yeah. for for Slimch. So we know he's not running Doomsayer now. And true this enough. Is... Yep. I mean the the. Paladin's doing what it does. It's being plucky and taking and taking him down. He's going to get him close to Leroy range. But let's see. Does, it, does it, the Priest have one more clear here? I think with Kazakas, he's probably going to get another clear. Well, we haven't seen the Dragonfire Potion yet. Yeah, it doesn't come up, though. Holy smite, not what he's looking for. Kazakas can clear the board. Uh, but yeah, the Crawler's going to take one out also. But the problem is, even if he clears the board, he's he's got to get armor as part of that combination because he's got lethal he with Leroy, Leroy and the weapon. Oh, he didn't get it. Oh, man, that's going to feel so bad. And Slimsh has to know that Leroy is lurking in the deck somewhere. Yes, I mean, Slimsh really played the game perfectly, too. But, you know, the, and this is the power of the, that Paladin deck is it really can it can just kill you with a thousand paper cuts. Yeah, it, it doesn't look like it's a lot of power. Lots of 1-1s one and 2-1s and little little bitty tiny uh, bits of damage here and there, but it adds up. Well, that's that's going to be game one. Yeah, Earl knows it. He throws out the well-played ahead feels, of the, uh, the Leroy. Feels bad. Yeah, you hate to see that as the Paladin, or as the Priest player. You think you had everything lined up perfectly, uh, and then all of a sudden, let's do this. But it, and it's it feels weird talking about the priest as an underdog too because the priest just beats up on everything in the meta but it just didn't have the tools to be able to keep clearing all the small minions every single turn yeah all things being equal uh paladin does have a slight edge in that that paladin priest matchup but that's gonna put one game away uh for earls that he goes up one zero paladin becomes retired 
So what does he queue up next, do you think? Boy, going in going into this thing, you're going to have to face the priest again. I'd probably bring my rogue. And, well, there we go. Oh. Watch your step. I must protect the wild. With the rogues. Well, the druid has exactly what it exactly what it wants here. The rogue gets not, not a bad, not a bad hand. All right. So I've lost Cinder here for a couple minutes, so y'all have to hear my lovely voice while we get into this game. So the rogue's gonna open up with Swash Burglar into our friend Patches. He's in charge now. The druid has a variety of options. Now, normally you would want to go Laka here, but it's a possibility he may might wall growth here, or well, he may not. Now, this all plays into the rogue's strategy, as it has the our friend the quarter creeper just sitting in hand. And the rogue really is just going to try to drop out some minions and let him die quickly so he can keep his creeper out before the druid has adequate removal. And... Uh, interesting. This iron, ironwood golem, I've mostly seen it as an anti-priest tech. Really trying to get your armor up so the priest just can't beat you down. But it's... It works well with Oaken, with Oaken Summons and a variety of other cards. So... Let's see here. I think that we're mostly just going to see the rogue continue to just kill down minions, trying to chi out that creeper as soon as possible. And I, I actually might like to see him uh, coin. Hey, and, hey sorry, sorry. Apparently, hey, Cinder, Cinder is having welcome. some issues. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing the coin to kill the SI seven or SI seven to. Um, and then he only has to put one of his creatures in to kill the. Uh, Glocka Crawler. <laughs> this. Alright. So. Now, although he does have the swipe to clear this. Based on his hand right now, the swipe's acceptable. Though he really wants to get this wild growth out while it's still meaningful. So, we're going to take the clear here. Unfortunately, that's going to create a really cheap corridor creeper going into next turn. Now the question is, do you play the Creeper out now, or do you save it till you can combo it with the um, Bone Mare? And, well, it's hard to resist a one-mana 5-5, five five, isn't it? I would say, well, especially, especially, when, especially when you have an SI7 agent, and you can... Or even, yeah, have Cobalt Scalebane, so yeah. Drop a Scalebane on it. Well, well, goodness. He's going to have to start this his, his ramping soon if he, has a, if he wants a chance to win this game, but... When you're scoot there down 13 damage a turn, you're dead in two turns. So we may see this Ironward Golem do do a little bit of work right now, comboed out with the Wrath to take out. Now, do you take out the Scalebane or do you take out the Creeper? I think you gotta take out the Creeper here. Scalebane by itself is probably not going to do a whole lot, um, and that Ironward Golem is actually gonna be really good blockage for uh, this as well. Actually, is he? Uh, I was saying, it looks like no, he was about to play a naked SI7 agent there. I think you have to go Captain SI7. Just get this guy off the board. Agreed. Yeah. And plus he gives you two bodies for Scalebane, so you know he's yeah. gonna get hit with it, so... The Druid's used a lot of its removal, too. So the Rogue, I think, gets... I think Earl gets a sense it's time to go. And, oh, Malf here's Malfurion on Q. I was saying, I think that Malfurion's probably gonna be the best play here, because... It's you need to you're facing up against 14 damage at this moment. That's half your life total. I think you need to do it. And you need to do it for the one fives. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. He's he's dead otherwise. I mean, he has to be. He's dead otherwise. So at least protect him for a turn and to him be able to get three health as behind it as well or three armor. Oh, unfortunately for Slim, well, actually, there's two unfortunately now because he just picked up uh, Valspine Slayer. He could pop up the. Uh, oh boy. But he, I think he's gonna go Bone Mare here. Yeah, he's gonna go Bone Mare on the South Sea Captain. Um, we'll clear both these and 
probably still pert at least seven to the face with Celsius. Yeah, here we go. Uh, he's he's got some health, but when you're facing you know twenty some damage a turn, that's not going to last long. Boy, he's he's getting the top decks here. He is, yeah. This spreading play, great pickup. So let's see. We're, we're going to see the spreading plague. There's no question about that. The question is, do we see it with a wild uh, a wild growth or uh, an armor up? And I'm guessing we're going to see armor up here. He just needs to keep his armor total high enough until he can get this board this board cleared away. I agree. The rogue is the rogue is really putting on the pressure now. And clearing this kind of board is not Druid's. No, it's not. No, he's he's gonna have to work this down a little bit more before he gets there. So yeah, he's gonna spray flake and armor up here. Well, that's a cold blood. I would almost want to see him cold blood and then Valspine Slayer or something if he's gonna do it that way. Or he can shadow step something. He can shadow step the bone there, too. Let's see, we're gonna attack. Let's see. It's gonna shadow step the bone mare and then get that. And that's gonna give him that plus the vile spine, which is just ridiculous amount of power here. It is. It's like, actually, he's not even gonna worry about the vile spine here. He's just gonna clear this board up. Yeah, that ma that makes sense. Save the vile spine in case anything big comes out. But I mean, he's threatening. He's almost threatening lethal already. Correct. It's like, and then unfortunately for Earl here, Slump does have. Swipe is. Swipe can at least cut this board in half at this moment, including the thing that Cobalt just hit. Yeah, I think we're gonna, he's going to have to go swipe, golem, armor up. Oh, and you don't even have the this, ability to armor up, I don't think. Yeah, and this is why the rogue is effective against the druid, because when you're pressuring early, the druid just doesn't have time to get its ramp out. Now, that that's that said, anytime the druid doesn't draw um, ultimate infestation, it's a lot weaker. Yeah. It definitely is, yeah. So it's and now the cold blood. Wow, this is just gonna yeah. be a lot of damage. He's he's definitely threatening yeah. lethal next turn here. Yeah, Ur Earl sees blood here, this guy's and at least right now there's nothing that Slimsh can do about. It. I say, oh, well, I don't, but uh, we've seen both of the taunts though, so I don't think Oaken Summons will actually pull a taunt. Let's see what he's got in here. He could potentially. Well, oh, that helps. Wow, that helps. Okay, that's another turn. I don't, I don't know if it's enough, but that it looks like it's two turns to get through all that. Yeah, at least two turns right now, because yeah, he has two three-power creatures. Yeah, what the what the druid really what about needs? He needs what about ultimate infestation here. He does. I don't know if I would shadow step anything here. I don't think there's a lot of value in it at this point in the game. I mean, he's. I can see an argument uh, shadow step uh, Valspine and then get rid of one of these taunts and then. He's so far ahead. I I, I don't know here. I think you just. Oh. He's actually oh. aiming at the bone mare right now. I don't know what the advantage of that. You lose a nine power creature here if you do that. Yeah. I would at least attack with it first. It was a hard choice for them because I don't. It wasn't exactly a power turn there. Uh, but I, did he actually attack with the bone mare before he shadow stepped? I don't think he did. Yeah. I think when you're that far ahead, sometimes you lose sight of things. And I think that may be what we're seeing here. Crawler, no help. So there's two taunts, but let's see. I don't know. He's not. He doesn't have lethal here. No, he doesn't. He's a little short, but... He but should question, be able. To... What you really just have to do here is just make sure you don't get you don't set yourself up to get suckered. You just have to keep clearing the board. Set yourself up to win. Yep, there you go. And yeah, he's gonna put a fourteen here. Yeah. 
So this looks like the end unless we see. I mean, not even. Ultimate infestation. I don't think even saves him. No, that's it. There's nothing well, he could draw. There's nothing he could draw here, and twelve armor isn't enough. Twelve, no, fifteen armor. Not. He would need. So, he would need removal to. I mean, this is a league match, so he'll I... go through the motions here, but it's over. Actually, wait a minute. So, if he puts both things into the South Sea Captain, that would be 13 damage. It would move him up to 14, so he may not actually be dead at this point. Because he can clear the South Sea here. He should, at the next turn, be left with one health. Oh, actually, I forgot about the hero power. So he's not dead yet. Oh, now he is. Now, so Earl's gonna go up 2-0, and let's look at what that leaves. Earl's one now with his rogue and his and his paladin. So that leaves his, his priest up for the last game, or well, for his last class, not the last game, hopefully. Um, so Slim still has all three of his decks available to him: his druid, his paladin, and his priest to face Earl's priest. Yeah. Based on this lineup, I think we're probably going to see a spike for some reason. I think so too, which I think in that case, I would think Slump should want to bring that power and back out. Well, we've seen, no, this, this looks like a Highlander with a circle plus Priest of the Feast plus Dragonfire. Interesting. And so, yeah, he brought out, uh, Slump brought out the Druid here, which I think Druid is a good counter to Priest, I believe. Druid's, this Druid is running a lot of armor game. And he had the skill of initially drawing a ultimate infestation. So he's yep. got the... He, he has more of a power sequence this game. It really comes down to if it's enough to the Priest off. Correct. It's like, and We're going to see Ramping. does start. have... Yeah, ramping starts now, and then next turn that sets him up to coin, coin nourish. Uh, nourish. Yep. But Earl right now is actually more like a something like a dragon priest because he's just curving out. Basically, he'll have a play on four as well. Yep. Yeah, I think you have to coin nourish here. I don't. Yeah, and I give the, I give the Oaken summon, but I don't know if. Is, is he really concerned about getting beaten down by one, two twos or? Uh... Yeah, it's like I mean, it does put a taunt up in the way, but I don't know if it's worth it to what you get out of it. What is Elaine's will? Well, I hope you like my invention. Now he's giving them that priest really starting off with a lot of small stuff, so. All right, he's he's gonna have to do the ramping here to get to that ultimate infestation as soon as possible. Yeah, especially since he drew two now. He's gonna go Oaken Summon. I mean, it does. Uh, I don't... Okay, so I can actually see this. It it bumps that spell stone up to deal four. No. Meets. He's controlling the board, but the thing is, the priest isn't going to win through the board. The priest is going to win through, you know, 30 damage in one turn off of Anduin. So I I think he's got to hurry up and get to Ultimate Infestation and get Malfurion at. I definitely agree. It's like, he needs to get... At the very least, if he doesn't nourish this turn, he has to nourish next turn. That'll pretty much 10 mana the next turn. Yeah. I mean, Slimsh knows his stuff. Um, I just, it may be, he, he lost the first two games really quickly. He may be a little bit off his game here. And he's actually drawing cards with Nourish. No, he, no, no, he, took, he took crystals. Oh, he did through the man. Okay. For some reason I thought it popped up on my screen saying he took cards. I was like, do that. Yep. Um, boy. Now, next turn. He can coin ultimate infestation, and I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna have to get the the acolyte coin. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, yep, here it comes. You can't let the acolyte of pain stay up, I think, here, so... Yeah, here it comes. And this is this is basically how he gets back in this game. Now he's got to really focus on his armor gain. And fortunately, hasn't, he hasn't gotten Raza, Kazakus, or Anduin at this point, so the druid does have a chance to start an onslaught. Yeah, he absolutely does here. Um... So let's see. Priest can he can clear that, but he doesn't really have a chance to develop too well here. I, I don't know. I would have I would have popped two one first, and see what's see what's in the box, but yeah, agree. Because you know he has swipe too. So I mean, you're just you're gonna draw two cards, which at this point may not be the best thing in the world anyway, because you have a pretty yeah. full hand. I mean, the pr the priest is most dangerous when it has access to a lot of its resources. But sitting there on four cards, it's not making Slimsh Slim exactly scared. No, it's definitely not. Yeah. It's... Now, now we're gonna see some control warrior style armor up, armor up, armor up. See if he can get out of the burst range. Because really, his his secondary win condition here. Is just run the priest out of gas, kill off everything, make him have to play out Velen, kill Velen, and win fatigue, or yeah. pop, pop out a bunch of jades and just keep pounding face. Yeah, that is like this. He does the point now. He's got to because now uh, Earl is basically on his card draw here, so he's going to try to cycle through his deck as quickly as possible to get his combo pieces to just finish this game out just basically one turn it so he does need to start putting a little pressure on earl here yeah i mean the the druid is the druid's the beat down here he needs to take this he needs to take the opportunity here and start taking control of the game not play reactively to the priest like he was doing earlier interesting he's gonna clear I mean, I think it's fine with these, but he really needs to get his jades going. That's probably the big thing here. Yeah. I mean, he knows, he knows the priest still has all of its primary board clears. You know, potentially in hand. This actually... Ultimate, the... Sorry, the Spreading Plague actually does present a problem here, because the Druid doesn't have a lot of power on the board. And it really, Druid really needs to speed the game up here before the priest power sequence starts, and this is going to shut down the board for a while. So, I, I mean, even though the Druid has better card access here, I like the priest's position because it's not under any kind of pressure. It has time to draw. I definitely agree. As you mentioned, we haven't seen any, we haven't seen any first board there yet, so we don't know, you know. Okay, there's Psychic Scream right there. Which... Giving, him, giving, giving him a bunch of one fives might not be the worst thing, but he's gonna draw. He's gonna do his Kazakus and draw here. Yeah, now now the resource the resources are all evened out. I think the druid's gonna have a hard time getting through this. Yeah, it's like he's gonna have a very tough time building a board up now with both Psychic Scream and Dragon Fire yeah. Potion. Oh and and Wild Pyromancer and a bunch of dirt cheap spells. Yeah, and with with hand being so full, the ultimate infestation isn't going to be helpful. So he's going to have to start playing out his branching paths here, get deeper into his deck, and try to set up threats. My thoughts are plagued. Not sure. There's a lot of choosing here. It's basically like cycle, cycle, set up, set up jades. Is I think he, oh he's just going straight armor okay and he does have a uh, spell stone which should get upgraded twice here. Eight eight out of here. Yeah, we're gonna clear that with the uh, greater Jasper spell this stone. Is not the game that needs to be playing though. I mean, he's definitely out of first range here, but we're close to being able to win the game. 
He hasn't seen a whole lot of his Jade stuff though yet. It's like I think we saw the Jade Behemoth and Let's see. the two uh, mana ramp cards, which is a point. Yeah, the priest only has eight cards left in his deck versus ten to the druid, so Slim's just gotta hope that his armor gain is gonna be able to carry him, and the priest just won't be able to won't be able to OTK him or two turn or three turn kill him. Good thing for Earl, he does have another board here now. But on Slim, for Slimsha's good part here, Earl has not seen Raza yet. He has Anduin, but no Raza. So he's, even Earl's right now still pretty far off from comboing off. Huh. So he can't play out the ultimate infestation yet, and doesn't even want to because he hasn't. So he really needs to get his. Shuffled in. It looks like Slim's is just gonna try to. Okay, it's gonna throw three more times. I thought he might throw out even the Oaken Summons here, but that doesn't seem to be the case. But Earl, is this a is this the Psyche Scream turn? Is this or? It's possible. I mean, it's it's a lot of things to clog up the Druid's deck. I mean, having a handful of uh, all these basically useless pieces to draw later in the game. All right, he he's gonna make his. It looks like he's gonna make his move. Start just anything? start getting that armor off. Yeah, I think it seems reasonable here. Is like he's still looking for Raza, but I think there's he heads down to seven cards in deck. Yeah, and what the priest has to be careful of is that the the druid will eventually start stacking the board up. So I don't think he wants to use any of his big board clears here. Yeah, especially once he gets the Jade out of and everything else that... Yeah, he has gonna... to make this move to start trying to get rid of some of that armor. Because that's the thing that's going to keep him from winning the game. Oh. I want well, to help here. I guess we're going to see... Fandor so, how does, Bran how does Branching Paths interact with um, Fandor? I have not seen that interaction before. Now, let's look at the text on it. Choose twice. Um, I don't think Fandral interacts with it at all, because Fandral choose one card. My thoughts are plagued. So we're probably going to see Fandral Wrath here start clearing a path here, but what he's hoping for is to start getting into his jades. So we still, he still doesn't have much power that way. He does not. Web. Um, he's going to go with Branching Path here, it looks like. And it looks like you're gonna try to draw a couple more cards, or you can gain more armor. And wow, he's just he's just going to straight armor. Death is yeah, or... my turn is not. It's kind of a not much going on overall here, and Earl gets that he's gonna have to get this armor off, or the game, or he's gonna die in fatigue. Because once he goes. That's a cool white order. Now that he's gone to Anduin, he doesn't have much healing left. So, fatigue is going to be a very real thing. Six turns. Five turns now. And the druid, I mean, the druid has all the time in the world because it keeps refilling its hand, refilling its deck. Right, so it's like, to... and yeah, it's like not going to help it either. So, you're just going to say, oh, I'll just give you a bunch of stuff here. Whoosh! Well, there goes the board. But I think that's probably the most appropriate board clear to use at this point, because the other two are much bigger. Now he can um, ultimate infestations here. Question is, does he want to? I mean, I he does have seven. He does have seven cards in deck, so he will not overdraw yet. And chances are, there's at least one, maybe two Jade Idols here. So, and he doesn't specifically have to worry about bench here. Because he'll, he won't die in fatigue like the priest will. But 38 armor, that's a, you know, the priest certainly can't do that in two turns. It's going to take the priest probably three turns to cut through that. Yeah. Problem is that. Right. I'm out of cards. Uh oh. Oh, that's okay. So he still he's he does got have one of them. He does have one. No. Yeah. 
is can Earl do this fast enough? Well, he's down to Earl is down to two cards. One of those is Velen, but I don't think we've seen Velen yet. So That's basically, what Slimsh has to has to he's got to hold those two swipes to get rid of Velen because he doesn't have any other direct damage. Well, no, he's, he still has a wrap. I would say I, I think at least this turn he has to well. Of course, he needs to shuffle the Jade Idol at least where. here. Yep. And then... So, do we see Fandral with that? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. We have a we disconnect have... here. We have a DC. So, Forrest, you want to tell us about our... Uh, yes, absolutely. So, if I, and you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I believe this is the way the new rule was worded is if a disconnect occurs for more than five minutes or a player disconnects twice in a match, um, then the match is conceded, or the person who did not disconnect is the winner, if I remember correctly. Yep. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't you message the players and make sure everybody's online here? And I will, I'll sing pretty songs and keep everybody entertained. Oh, no, we have a... Looks like we have a reconnect. Okay, excellent. All right. So I have to ask the message and say, who's the one oh, who disconnected here? So that works pretty cleanly. Yeah, that's nice actually. Uh Fandral, Gate Idol. And you get a uh thing and actually wow, he can actually draw through a good portion right now. Yeah. Another Jade Idol. Oh, more yeah. cards. Probably gonna see the hero power here. Oh yeah, I think yeah. Actually he's gonna he's gonna attack. He's gonna use uh Go from an infestation guy to uh, clear Raza and then attack and kill the uh, Cold Light Oracle. Yeah, this isn't looking good for the priest now. I mean, no. the druid, druid really just stacked up his armor nicely. And this is and this is why people are bringing this Jade Druid. Is it's It can... Now, with branching paths and Oaken Summons, it really can stack up a lot of armor. It really can. It's like it can play the fatigue game better than probably any deck right now. Um, all right, so it looks like he might go Velen, but he actually looks like he's going to Dragon Fire Potion, clear this board out, and then he even has enough. Actually, I'd probably pretty much hold on to the rest of those cards there. They're low cost. So what the what the Druid's got to do now is start to present threats. And obviously. He has to keep the armor up, but to fight the priest on two fronts. One, making him have to remove the board instead of going face, and two is keep the armor up so he can't so he can't get bursted out of nowhere. That is a dead card if I ever saw one. Yeah. Yep. This is not looking good. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, the priest wasn't able to draw his power sequences early enough, and I think the druid has effectively gotten out of range here. I think so too. Is like, um, he does have another oaken summon, but there's nothing in there to oaken summon at the moment. Yeah, but we'll again, take he does the, have enough. take the armor. He can just he can just jade behemoth and um, armor up here and be happy. I think so. Those, those little green men just keep getting bigger. I'm just trying to just trying to do a quick calculation here. Is there any way they can he can burn him down? I don't think with the cards that Earl has in hand that he can burn him out. You think he can with the cards in hand? I don't think he can. No. It's like I even if he I probably even, use the Spirit Lash until later, but even if he No, this looks like this looks like him. Given up here. Yeah. Storm Gadget and Action Air out, that's pretty much. That's what. I mean, that's part of why I like um, Lyra more right now, but that's a whole other conversation. So, if he tried to burn him out, I think he just dies to the board because he doesn't have enough resources to clear the board and burn him out here at this point. So. I would say for Slimpshear, I would not touch that uh, Gadget and Action Air. Just let it be. No. Yeah, my thoughts are I mean, it's gonna it's gonna crash into the three five and not die. So I would definitely leave that up. Oh no, yeah, gonna, no, I would. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, why is he? He's clearing it. Wow, I'm actually surprised by that. Don't, I don't quite get that one because he 
he doesn't have. Oh no, he he can wrath swipe to get rid of Valen. But this is over. There's there's nothing the priest can do to win this game at this no. point. Uh, he can he can cast everything in his hand, almost everything in his hand right now, and he I don't think he even takes off half his armor at this point. Yeah, so Slimsh is Slimsh Druid is gonna take this game. So now Which that we that let's go to Paladin to and Priest to face Earl's Priest. What do you bring? You bring. I think you, I think I think you bring the Paladin and try to rush him down. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna have to win with both eventually anyway. Oh, uh, they're gonna have to rechallenge back up, so it's gonna take a moment uh, because of the disconnect. Yeah. Um, do you, so is that yeah. how it works? You have to correct. Have to I, challenge over? I think you do because it says right now that Earl's hanging out in the main room. So Oops. I believe that means they're having. Sure they're gonna have to rechallenge sure back up. He's going into their collection here. Yeah, I see it. Sometimes the client can be buggy here. I've, I've yeah. noticed this. With, I've noticed this with the client since they added the feature. Is sometimes it, it boots you out and but and you have to restart it to be able to view the thing. But oh nope, it's working. It looks like we're back here. in here. So. And he, uh, Slim, uh, did yep, decide to bring the Paladin in here. Yep. Oh, that's nice. Whoa! Please. That's a consecration. Yep, I didn't have to respect either of them. That's pretty sweet. And here we go. Alright, chat. Chat, hit us up. Who's favored? Let's see some, let's see some dirty mic icons for Slim. Shh. I don't know why. And let's see some Monka's icons for Earl. Who's winning this one? All right. So I got to be honest, I like Earl's hand here early a lot more than I like Slimch's because like, his turn this turn is like Righteous Protector, and that's it. No Murloc, no nothing. And that is the one catch. Aggro and Murloc are really close to each other, but... Aggro tends to have a slight advantage because Murloc have to be synergistic. There is no other option for them. Yeah. I mean... This deck that Slimsh has brought, it's... Curator. I mean, it's... I'm trying to think. I would say, I can understand Curator because you can pull a Murloc, uh, you play Cobalt Scalebane, that's a dragon, and, oh yeah, um, now that uh, all the decks are playing Corridor Creeper, that's a beast. Corridor... This actually is a really... I really like this tech choice from him uh, to play Curator in this deck. Because they can get you your Creeper, you can get you... Or also Galaka Crawler, which we're seeing in hand right now, too. I like it. I'm not sure if I like it against Priest, though. I mean, it may no, not have been the way he drew this up. It's just that... I mean, the best the best thing to do with the Priest is to beat them before they can bring in all their power sequence. Yeah, and I think that's, that's the big issue here, is I think... Slimsh had a really rough draw. He had a one drop, a three drop, drew into a two drop. Now, admittedly, now he does have another two drop with Corridor Creeper. He could play this turn if you would like. Nice that. And yeah, Although, Walker Crawler as well. It's gonna be walking into a Shadow or Death. Yes, it is. Yeah, that's gonna be just a pretty clean. And it also sets up net nicely for Raza for next turn because. Well, actually, no, there's Cobalt Scalebind. That's not too bad of a pickup for Slump here. I still think he's going to have to play Raza into this here. Start challenging yeah. the board because he doesn't have a lot of removal. I definitely agree with that. Well, I mean, he just picked up Dragonfire yeah. Potion, too, but. It's not going to be terribly helpful. So the Priest really has to now rely on being able to draw Psychic Scream and onto it because the Paladin's starting to take the board over. Unfortunately, we don't see a lot of synergy here. We're just no, a lot it's of like, uh, vanilla bodies. Yeah. Fortunately, the, the scale bane is good at turning vanilla bodies into buffed up bodies. Yep. And right now, the dragonfire potion it will clear out everything except the yeah. That's the easy one. That's the arms, arms again. 
Unfortunately, I think the only two drop that's in his deck is in his hand right now. I think it's Blood Mage Thalamus. No, no, wait, no. There's a. Uh, there's more early drops. There's Northshire Cleric. Other stuff. So. Comes the curator. See. Beast, dragon, Murloc. That's a pretty nice reload. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely you're right. And you're right. It actually, certainly was effective. And I actually forgot about Gentle Mega Sword. That is a beast as well. So. Yeah, it definitely has some utility here. Question is, is he going to be able to keep the pressure on before the priest can turn the corner? Yeah, right I, don't, does. I, I don't think so. Well, he can combine the Dragonfire Potion and his creature and the Holy Smite. He can clear the four. No, actually, no, he can't. No, he can't. No, he's one short. Because of the taunt. Yep. So the qu has Slimsh has Slimsh turned the corner and is he gonna force game five? I think he might have here. I really think he might have because I I think Earl might be in a place he has to dragon fire this even though you only clear two things from it. But well, let's see. Wow, he actually got three things from it. Oh and wow! Because of, because of the new trigger order rule, the pyromancer did not activate as it shouldn't. <laughs> And he has a lot of cheap minions too now, so he, Holy Smite. Wow, he may, he might still be able to clear this board from this, which is insane to think. But yep, we're gonna see and draw cards, and he can still use Binding Heal if he would like. Oh wow! Oh, this is huge. Yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna draw a lot. Oh, did he get it off in time? He did. Oh. Goodness gracious, that's just a reload there. That's looks like he's gonna is he gonna overdraw. Uh... No, he's well... at nine. He's at nine. He's good. Okay. I'm trying to think though, it's like um I'm trying to think if tiny or if uh Gentle Megasword can do something here. Wind Fury? Divine Shield, probably. Yeah, I think Divine Shield there. Poisonous is not giving you too much here. Oh, especially oh. when you have that. Boom. No. Wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. wait. What's he doing? He's trading. So that, I don't agree with that. Okay. Yeah, I guess he's got to be careful to not let those Divine Shield we get popped here. Well, the problem is, uh, Earl has Anduin. He can basically clear this board right now, with the exception of the three-two, and he can he can even silence the. Uh, or I thought I saw a silence. Yeah, there's a silence there. Yeah, he can silence the. Uh, the uh, Grimscale chump and just trade it with the uh, Northshire fight too. He's probably gonna need to do it. I would. Uh, oh, okay. Well, actually, yeah, I forgot. he does have that round too. He just trades it okay. in hero power, so. That does work. Oh boy. Slimsh got uh, so close, but... Well, the good news for Slimsh is he does have Call to Arms here. So... Let's see what he gets. Those are not the worst, and because they actually did the right uh, order trigger there for that, since uh, the other one was out first. So we know the that... Well, let's see, it's not over... It's not over next turn because Slimsh has already, or Earl has already used um, Holy Smite. So the most that he's going to crank out is 21 next turn. Well, I mean, he has Psychic, he has Psychic Scream, so I mean, all this is could easily be going back into the deck right now, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and he has Priest of the Feast, so he's going to actually gain a lot here as well. I think he's yeah he's got to clear the board here. He's got twenty one. He's got yeah. he's got a burst of twenty one. I think he's gonna have to he's gonna have to figure on winning this over three turns here. This is this feels bad when you're the paladin too, to basically be down to almost no resource because the priest has so much ability to clear the board at this point. 
Oh, I think he's counting that he might have it right now. Let's see. Not all wonders are lost. Yeah, that's... Oh yeah, because the powered shield. Yeah, I think this is game here. That's it. What is it? Oh yeah, he has silence too. Yeah, he has silence too. Uh, yep, I was going to take this 3-1. Yep. So my prediction on Tavern Talk was incorrect. So Earl will take... Yeah, Earl, Earl will take this now. And... It looked like a pretty dominating fashion, to be perfectly honest. He had a small hiccup with the druid pa druid uh, priest, but I think the druid tends to be favored against priests anyway. Usually, so especially now with all that armor gain. But wow, that was that was sort of just a beating. I gotta be honest there. I mean, I have not liked these strategies that I've seen where people leave priest up. I think priest is just has the potential to just be too dominating. Um. I mean, I get that there are definitely decks you can beat it with. The Druid certainly showed a lot of promise against it, but especially in Conquest, where you eventually have to face the deck. I don't know. I don't know about this Leaf Priest up strategy. What do you think? I don't know. It's like, given Slimsh's strategy, because I believe Slimsh brought, uh, if I remember correctly, it was Rogue. And... Got it here. Slimsh brought Druid, Pally, Priest, Warlock. Okay, so yeah, with that lineup, I think that's definitely a uh, uh, a priest ban because Paladin should be able to do pretty much burst anything down from the Warlock um, as to, up until like turn five or turn six, and Warlock doesn't have a whole lot of answers that early, especially if you're playing Q block. Um, and Druid was, you know, J Druid. Usually, you can get bigger than even what they have available for. Q block. So yeah, I, I think I would have liked that. Now, on the other hand, for Earl, I could have seen the Warlock ban because he did bring Paladin, Priest, and Rogue. If, if Slimsh brought Aggro or Druid, I could maybe he make a little bit bigger of an argument for a Warlock ban, but... Yeah, I mean, with how flexible Priest is, it's hard to plan to beat it. I, I don't know if I can see this so much. Um, let's go back through the decks that we saw. Um, Slimsh's Druid definitely was very effective in shutting down the Rosakis Priest. However, he really had to guess there was a Rosakis Priest because I don't think that deck would, would have been as effective against a Dragon Priest. It probably would have gotten smacked around quite a bit. So he yeah. had to make an educated guess there. Um, we didn't get to we didn't get to see Slimsh, um, Slimsh's Warlock obviously because it got banned, but his um, his Paladin was effective, and I think in playing anything other than that Rosakis Priest, it probably would have been good, because it was it looked to have a lot of uh, good anti-aggro tools. Absolutely. I was, and I think with everybody bringing Paladin, or at least a good number, I think we mentioned on Tavern Talk that Paladin is the third most played class, or maybe Rogue. I know Priest and Warlock are one and two, but it's like yeah, with with that all the aggro stuff that was anti aggro stuff that was in that priest, I think it's really hard to do that. But at the same time, we do have noticed that last match, Slimsh did get him down to about eleven. And if just a couple of other things that would have broken correctly, he might have been able to come back, or he might have won that match. It was really close, but it turned where Earl would go. Correct, yeah, that was just, yeah, drawing seven, eight cards in one turn was just insane, by any standard, um, especially yeah. for this, so, um, and then, yeah, the Druid, I think, was fine, and then, I, I, you know, uh, looking at his lineup, I'm sort of wondering if that Warlock was Zulok and not uh, um, Cube. Leaving Priest up, I think you have to bring Cube. I think so, too. It was like, because one of the ones that actually does have a good matchup against it, so. Yeah, because Zoo's Zoo is not spectacular against uh, Rosakas, at least. And the power level of the Dragon Priest decks right now is just so that, like, I wouldn't bring Zoo against that. So, it was an interesting match overall. Um, Slim certainly had a poor opening hands in two of them, but Earl showed a lot of mastery with um how he how he had to navigate the matches overall and it was a it was a good hard fought win for him yeah no absolutely it's like and 
I, I know everybody, I think, well, no, somebody, I think Jack Sox picked Earl on Tavern Talk, I believe, but, um, but yeah, no, that, and that's, this is actually a great first match, I think, to have on stream. It definitely highlighted two of the better, better players in THL. Um, it was very competitive. It was great, but Earl does end up taking it for Team Swagoy. Over Slimch from Noob Central. Over Slimch from Noob Central, so yeah. So let's do a quick preview of our stream for tomorrow night. Yep, absolutely. So tomorrow night, we have our Friday night fights, and tomorrow night we are going to have our first match from Sylvanas League. Um, and let me make sure that I'm bringing the right people up here, because I believe, if I remember correctly, it is... Steffi versus Lefty. Yep. Um, and that would be a competition between Tan Pam Surf Slam and I know this. Uh, Zenergy, correct? No. That's not right. Let's see here. Yep. So Slimsh and Inked will be casting that one starting at 8 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow night. Correct. And let's talk let's talk about the second match. Uh, the second match is Bonja um, from Team Mox, my team, uh -huh. uh, against. Uh, sorry, Oof. I'm getting into the I'm getting into the document that has all this. Sorry, I'm just like. All right, Wolfmack, I, know, I, know, I know what Wolfmack, correct from Spicy Boys. Um, yeah. I'll be honest. Team Mox right now is in a very tough spot this week. Um, we can do it. I, I have faith. We. No bias. Even though I did say on Tavern Talk that I don't think we can do it, but <laughs> um, no, I used to be humble. I was being humble, yeah. But I mean, anything can happen. Is like if Bonja wins, if I win, if Cyclomath Cyclometh wins, then you know, and with the I think one of those probably have to be a sweep, depending on the points left over. But that will uh, that will be covered from that. And then oh, here we go. Actually. But two, two exciting matches for you tomorrow, starting 8 p.m. Eastern Time with Slimsh and Inked here on THL Twitch. Absolutely. So, um, I guess, do you have anything to, um, Combat, do you have anything else for this evening? No, I just want to congratulate the Tavern Talk folks. They did a great job kicking the season off. Um, Absolutely. Force, thank you for for producing this evening, and we want to uh, we want to thank our fabulous operator, um, Bonja, for getting us through, making us sound good, and thank yes, you all for, well, thank for, you. for for tuning in for our season premiere. We'll be back with you tomorrow, everyone. Have a good night. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Good night.